Hey, so in this video, I'm basically going to go over uh, some of the uh, practical issues dealing with uh, ride like circuits. So be before I go on with that, I would like to mention a few things I, I missed uh, in the last video. So um, I just want to point out that since we have this equivalent circuit here, it's a lot easier to um, interpret uh, the the two scenarios that I describe in the first videos, the, the the first yeah the the first video, okay. So imagine when you have a high transient uh, come low voltage. Uh, so when when the guy basically uh, touch the the hot one the hot wires or yeah, yeah. So what happens is that this current ICM would be very large. So large that your up amp cannot uh, provide enough feedback current, so this becomes saturated, right? So this is it is not operational anymore. So this has become very large, also because this, these are the two of the same voltage, right? So what it sees, what what this potential sees is that our uh, our output is basically this thing in series with this is a voltage source right like I, I mentioned earlier so that is connected to ground and th these two are in parallel so I just wanted to recap that uh, what I talked about during the first video or so so this is RF parallel with R0 so you see that in the final equation we derived in the last video, there's no R naught. So you might wonder what the heck is going on? What's the R naught for? And sometimes I've seen the, the like application data sheets and they have this R naught and R right leg here. So you might not understand that that, but um, it comes down to that uh, R R naught here is just a safety precaution. Uh, uh, just a uh, yeah. So it basically uh, helps. Uh, when there's a large, large uh, transient uh, voltage here, that means uh, imagine when when R not is very small. Uh, when R R feedback here is in parallel with something really small, that means R out here is your protection, the patient from the the ground. Here it's just R L plus something small, and that is not good. So you want something R not to be a decent size, you know. 5 mega ohms or 1 mega ohm parallel with 1 or 5 mega ohm here so that provide uh, some protection to, to the patient so just uh, I just want to point out why uh, is this uh, like this right here so that's when that's the first scenario when uh, the 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 common mobile voltage is very large but when it's when it's low it's in a normal range this is operational then the equivalent resistance is just uh, this right here, seen from the uh, common mode voltage. So when this is working, it will drive down the equivalent resistance. When it's not, now er everything breaks down to uh, the output resistance like this. Okay, uh, I will move on to the practical matter, such as uh, here how how you actually tap into the common mode voltage at these two uh, outputs uh, from the buffer here. So it, in practice, you can actually do that because, uh, for example, the the AD60 INA does not have uh, connection to these two points. What it does have is it exposes uh, the their gain. So you can you can uh, you have access to these two nodes right here, right here, right. So what you can do is you can hook up another uh, potentiometer here is what I would recommend and then you can slide along and choose the middle point and that will be your your common mode right so this is like you know two times RA or something but anyways w w the thing is like when you have the, to uh, to to work around like this I mean, you have to com consider changing RG, the gain resistor of the INA, in combination with this potentiometer, such that the R equivalent of these two in parallel will give you the new R gain, the new RG, if you will. 
this is a new RG. So for 80, uh, 8620, the gain is actually uh, set by 1 plus 49k something over RG. So, so by, by putting a resistor in parallel, you change RG. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't have to worry about. So just keep that in mind. But once you uh, figure that out, you can like compensate. And like once it's done, you can just like change the location here uh, for VCM to to calibrate your signal basically, and that doesn't change the equivalence uh, resistance anymore. Okay, so that's uh, one of the practical uh, things I want to mention. Um, and oh yeah, and I'll talk about the the guard output. Okay, how how you produce the guard output? Let me start a new page first. All right, so so imagine uh, I have access to the come uh point, and then I have this, 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 right? So this is a come mode out, right? So for a guard, you want to use a buffer here, and basically it's a gain of one buffer, and this is basically V out guard. This is guard. For for those that do not understand the term guard, so uh, for for example, you have a coaxial cable like this, right? Usually, there's a shield. Uh, they have a shield around uh, the, the the wire here. So this is your signal wire. So it goes through the cable, and outside is probably uh, some kind of conductor. Uh, conductor material. So this is your shield. Basically, you hook up your guard to this uh, shield, and basically, it produces uh, the the potential uh, common mode potential here. So that 60 hertz voltage such as this. Uh, that's not good. So 60 hertz here. It sees itself, if you will. It cannot couple to this thing because this is still 60 hertz this is uh, V combo equals to V 60 hertz so w when, when there's at the same potential there's no capacitive coupling here so that's good and also the signal wire also has the common mode signal so there will be less coupling to the the cable itself so it's a very good uh, strategy to minimize uh, uh, interference all right? So uh, once you have this guard in place, then how can you interface uh, to the, the right like uh, drive? Well, you just keep going. So basically, you take this out to the guard for one point here, and then uh, erase that. Basically, you have a non inverter just like before here. Okay. And then uh, typical values or the gain here you want to set is around 100. So I use 10k here, 10 kilo ohm, and typical value is 1 mega ohm for RF. And then you want, uh, oh yeah, remember, you have to put R R not here to protect the the patient in case of uh, transient respond response or patient stability here. So I'll put one mega ohm here, and we can model the right leg uh, resistance at 100k. That's the worst case scenario. Okay, and then this is ground. I'll put here. Okay. So do 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 do. Did I miss something? No, I think that's all I want to talk about in this video. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I was going to talk about this. So I was looking at the day sheets from TI, and they mentioned about uh, putting, perhaps putting a uh, capacitor here, so that you have a low pass filter effect here. That basically uh, enhance the stability of the circuit to prevent oscillation. So you basically set up a cutoff frequency. This is a low pass. So in the the uh, the document they use a uh, 1.5 nanofarad, so that's a good starting point. All right, uh, 
if you have any uh, questions, please uh, post below or any comments. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like. Alright, uh, thanks for watching. I see you next time.